All right, well, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Uh, it is the public comment deadline uh, for folks to submit their comments to the Oregon Water Resources Department uh, regarding uh, water transfer applications that could lead to a water right swap uh, between the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and the city of Cascade Locks in order to allow uh, Nestle to bottle publicly owned water. Um, and this is an issue that uh, tens of thousands of Oregonians have spoken out against uh, for the last five years. It's a very contentious issue, especially as Oregon is heading into uh, a series of major droughts. Um, we have a really great lineup of speakers to come out today to talk about uh, the why people are so concerned about this proposal um, and right here visually in front of us are the comments that we've collected um, the physical comments we've collected to deliver to the water resources department uh, we don't all have a final count at this point because many of people most people have been submitting these comments online so we'll have a final count once the water resources department has had a chance to tally those up but right here we're talking about uh, a few thousand comments alone. Um, and just to mention uh, that ultimately we are calling on the governor to intervene here uh, because these are state agencies that, uh, that are considering giving away publicly owned water so that Nestle can bottle it. And we really think we need leader leadership from the top. Uh, and what's not visually represented here because we decided to save some trees <laughs> um, is that we have well over 25,000 comments that we are, or 25,000 petitions we will be delivering uh, to the governor's office later today as well. Um, this is clearly a major issue that Oregonians are very concerned about. Um, our lineup of speakers is we have a, a spokesperson from Ann Leininger's office because um, she was not able to make it to the adjusted time uh, to make room for the 12 o'clock event. Um, we have uh, Deanna Buzz, Buzz, Boosticker, sorry, just not saying, uh, who is the city council member from Cascade Locks speaking um, on behalf of her community and their concerns. Uh, and we also have uh, Jeff Clackey, who is with Oregon AFSCME, who's the president of Oregon AFSCME, speaking about uh, this issue. Uh, and we're going to wrap it up with uh, Jacob von Borth, who uh, started uh, H2 Origami, uh, a, a project to call on previous Governor Kitzhopper to put a stop to this proposal. Um, and now he's uh, targeting uh, Governor Brown. So without further ado, I'll hand it off to Hillary. Hi, I'm Hillary Sager, Legislative Assistant to Representative Ann Leininger, and I'm here today to deliver her statement on her behalf. The representative wanted to be here in person, but she's needed on the House floor for voting at this time. We're at a turning point for water use in the West. Seven Oregon counties face drought emergencies, climate change is a fact of life, and we read in the news about investors who seek to divert Northwestern water to California. At a time like this, I'm concerned that our state government is helping a private company extract and sell the public's clean water. Instead, we should, be we should be focused on how Oregon will meet the water needs of our people, fish, environment, and farmers. I know Gov Governor Brown has a strong commitment to protecting Oregon's environment. I want to work with Governor Brown and with my colleagues in the legislature to safeguard Oregon's clean water. Here are steps we can take. First, we can create a new plan to steward Oregon's precious clean water in a way that accounts for, for drought conditions, growth pressures, and our 38 million thirsty neighbors in California. We cannot let Oregon become the next Owens Valley. The 2012 Integrated Water Resources Strategy that Oregon's Water Resources Department created is a good starting place. It's not a finish line, however. That strategy called for better monitor monitoring and analysis to understand pressures on our water supply and development of tools to help the state work with communities to plan in a smart way to meet water needs. We need to know what's happening with that strategy. Does it account for drought conditions and other emerging pressures? What does it mean for the sale of state water resources? Have we allocated enough funding for, the, for this important analysis? The Oregon Legislature should hold a hearing on the status of Oregon's water strategy. We need to ensure it is up to date and reflects Oregon's values. We should address whether it's good policy for a state agency to actively help a private company extract and sell our public water. We also need to add safeguards to protect our water from contaminants like pesticides and from diversion to other states. Times are changing in the West. Water is scarce and climate change is happening. This deal with Cascade Locks and Nestle is a stark reminder of the pressures on Oregon's water supply. 
It is a wake-up call about the work we need to do to protect our communities, wildlife, and environment moving forward. I look forward to working with the governor and colleagues in the legislature on these important issues. Thank you. Hi there. Once again, uh, my name is Deanna Boosticker. I am a city council member in Cascade Locks. Um, I'd like to first thank Julia DeGraw from Food and Water Watch for inviting me to speak here today. And as you all may well know, the, the city council's official position on this issue is pro-Nestle. And these statements I'm making today are the result of myself talking with a group of concerned citizens about our feelings on the process so far and what we most want to see in our community. News coverage and a slick YouTube video produced by Nestle might lead Oregonians to believe that everyone who lives in our hometown of Cascade Locks supports a water bottling proposal here. But that's far from the truth. When we talk to our neighbors, we discover many others who feel that the state and our city are failing to conduct proper due diligence of Nestle's proposal. Five years ago, it would have been hard for many to believe that Oregon, Washington, and the entire West Coast would experience widespread drought. This new reality of global climate change gives us pause, especially with our own Governor Kate Brown's recent announcement of droughts in seven Oregon counties. Is inviting an extractive industry into our community really the right way to meet our economic development needs when the future of water availability is so uncertain? City Hall seems to forget that our water rights are given to us by the state who has the final authority on how best to protect it for us all. You can just ask the Klamath River Basin. In the end, water rights don't matter much if there isn't enough water to fulfill them. If the city were to sign a contract allowing Nestle to pump a specific amount of water, are they really still our rights? If something goes wrong, will we be able to fight their expensive lawyers? And how long would it take to force them to cease and desist while they continue pumping? Nestle's main concern is about its profit margin. As for our town, it's about how we want our community to grow. As residents, we want local, sustainable, and socially responsible long-term economic solutions that will benefit us for years to come. The acceptability of selling public resources for private profit belongs in the past, and the only way to move forward is to discover new industries to develop. The city and port are working with other potential manufacturers in appropriate locally owned industries, so the opportunities are there. Cascade Locks has a long history of pulling together to get things done, and Nestle does not seem like a good fit or an appropriate industry for us. We can do better. Our own state agency, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, has helped the city open the door to expediting this process. It is extremely disappointing that an agency charged with protecting our water as a public resource would disregard the potential long-term implications of this project. While we are especially concerned about what a water rights swap would mean for the future of our community, we recognize that the public water belongs to all Oregonians. This comment period ends today, so it is time to prepare our words for the public response period after the Water Resources Department makes its decision. We will continue to work within city limits, and all Oregonians can continue putting pressure on Governor Brown and ODFW. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, good morning. My name is Jeff Klatke, and I am the president of Oregon AFSCME, which is the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees. We represent workers at over 170 governmental and non-governmental jurisdictions throughout Oregon, uh, more than 30 of which include in their purview public water stewardship and distribution to residential and commercial customers. We also represent workers at the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality, 
and environmental stewardship and sustainability bureaus and departments in cities and counties. Oregon AFSCME has been opposed to this project, uh, this proposed water bottling project since the beginning, since 2010, for one reason. Because we are opposed to the transfer of public assets serving the public good to private ownership and private control. In this particular case, water. Whether it's Bull Run or the Willamette River or Oxbow Spring, public water should remain publicly owned and managed for public use and for the public good. We believe this philosophically. We also believe that that philosophy has been wisely codified into Oregon statute, ORS 537.110, which states in its entirety, and I quote, all water within the state from all sources of water supply belongs to the public, end of section. Now since 2010, there have been other reasons why AFSCME is opposed to this project. One of these reasons is because Nestle has refused to reach an agreement with the Oregon State Building and Construction Trades Council or the Columbia Pacific Building Trades Council regarding the workforce that could be used for any construction. Now Nestle has refused to agree to use Oregon union labor or an Oregon contractor for that matter for any aspect of this project. If Nestle would agree to guarantee Oregon jobs benefit from this project, some of AFSCME's friends in the building and construction trades would be, attempt, uh, would be tempted to support this project, but just so we're clear here, Oregon AFSCME would continue to oppose it on philosophical grounds, and our friends in the construction trades are aware of this. Oregon AFSCME's primary concern, which is why we have chosen to partner with these like-minded organizations, is the stewardship of a public water resource which, in our opinion, should never be allowed to come under private ownership or control. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Jacob Von Borg and I'm with, I am a youth leader with the nonprofit organization Resources for Health and I am the co-creator and leader of the H2 Origami Project. Um, a, as a young person working in the field of activism, I have seen firsthand the impacts our actions and decisions make on the near and distant future, and that we can all ha we all have the ability to make change every day, whether it be positive or negative. This is one of the reasons why I am a strong advocate for the protection of and conservation of water now, for the sake of the present and future generations. Considering that no matter when or where you live, we will always need access to clean, safe water to live our day-to-day -day lives, it seems only reasonable that we should have a responsibility to protect this natural resource from privatization and pollution. This was the thought that sparked the H2 Origami Project. I have been a part of the battle against Nestle since 2012, joining the efforts at the age of 14. My involvement began when the Resources for Health Youth Service Learning Group hatched an idea to promote water protection and conservation through art. The, pro the project called H2 Origami uses art, mainly in the form of origami, made from recycled materials with water protection messages written on them to make our voices heard. The artistic aspect of the project was conceived from the idea that anyone of any age should have the chance to contribute since we all, regardless of age, need water to survive. After considering many topics and issues facing water in Oregon, we decided to focus our efforts on raising awareness and speaking out against Nestle's ongoing attempts to bottle the water of Oxbow Springs in Cascade Locks. With the multinational corporation's track record of environmental destruction and not living up to their promises, we all agreed that having Nestle take root in Oregon wasn't something we wanted to see happen. From the beginning of the campaign to now, we have brought H2 Origami to numerous events and venues, collecting thousands of water protection messages from Oregonians of all ages that we transformed into colorful displays and delivered and sent to the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and to the former Governor Kitzhaber. These message, messages, along with thousands more from Oregonians voicing their concerns with Nestle's plans, have gone unanswered. Today, as a young person of Oregon, I am calling on the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, the Oregon Water Resources Department, and Governor Kate Brown to stop the water transfer between the city of Cascade Locks and the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and say no to Nestle once and for all. 
Allowing Nestle to set up operation in Oregon will contribute to a legacy of commercialization and destruction of our natural resources. I urge our decision, decision makers to deeply consider the long-term environmental and social impacts a bottling plant would have on Oregon and make the choice to protect water as a basic human right for generations to come. Thank you. Um, we actually have uh, a visual from the H2 Origami Project, and I realized since after that really powerful statement, um, maybe we should do a photo op with folks holding the sign, if you guys can um, stick around for that visual. Um, and I also have state, uh, the official written statement from Ann Leininger's office uh, for everyone who's interested in uh, my card. Uh, if you could give me a card, uh, I will make sure you get the final press release from us as well in an email. Uh, we'll send out to the full press list as well, uh, the final press release uh, later this afternoon. Um, but yeah, I will, do we wanna, would it be best for us to do the photo like up here on stage? Or I'm trying to think if we're in front of the stage, will the cameras be able to catch the visual? It's probably gonna be better back up on the stage. Okay, should we um, move the podium? Do have any opportunity no. for questions? Yeah, do we wanna do questions before the photo op? Is that something? Okay, so if folks want to come up so you can speak into the mic if there's questions for you. So yeah, let's do questions. The question I have, I don't, there's nobody here from Fish and Wildlife today, but they seem to be a, a driving force in this deal. What is their position um, towards Nestle and towards this deal? Does anybody know? There's a, a public um, uh, document that they've been sending around uh, to state legislators and different groups, um, and I can forward that around to folks. Uh, but the, they say they're pro they're doing this project because they're approached by the city of Cascade Locks for an economic development proposal, and it was the, the Nestle proposal. And and this happened under Governor Kulongoski, who. Um, who was the only governor to openly kind of support this proposal. Uh, Kit Sopper never weighed in. Um, so that's what they're saying, is that it's economic development for uh, Cascade Locks, which definitely does not fall under their, their mission. <laughs> so, does it seem like they're pushing for it? I mean, that's, I mean, it seems like they're pushing for it when they apply for, I guess that was some backstory here. Uh, ODFW is pursuing this water rights transfer um, in lieu of a water exchange application that's currently on file with the Water Resources Department. Uh, the, on paper, what actually happens with this water looks almost identical from one application to the next. What's different is that the water exchange application that was hatched five years ago um, has a requirement for a public interest review. The Water Resources Department has to take a broader look because it's a change of use for that water at whether or not that change of use is the highest and best use for that public water resource. Under a water rights transfer, uh, what's different here is it's permanent, it's a permanent change in the use of this water, and it does not require a public interest review. So it's a more permanent change that requires less of a review. And that's actually one of the major reasons why we have legislators that are concerned, um, and that there's so much more of a fervor on this issue right now, is, is in addition to water scarcity looming in Oregon, this is a state agency that is purposefully uh, expediting this proposal and removing a public interest review process in order to do so. So these thousands of comments that you have here, are, did those go through you or how, how do those fit into all the comments? So um, we have a combination of comments. I know that um, BARC is an organization that is a major part of the Keep Nestle Out of the Gorge Coalition um, and that a pile of these comments are directed to Governor Brown specifically. Um, the rest of these comments are all directed to the Water Resources Department and were collected by both uh, BARC and Food and Water Watch. Uh, but there are a series of organizations um, that have been uh, avidly working to collect public comments on this. Uh, but because the Water Resources Department has a web form, uh, most of those comments are not tracked through the organizations. They're just, you know, asking people to go to the web forum on Water Resources Department's website. So we're not going to really have a final tally, and we're not going to know how many organizations got which comments, but we are going to know um, that 
those comments wouldn't exist if these organizations hadn't done the work. These are separate from the public comment process. These are going directly to the governor and the they, no, these are definitely part of the public comment process. We're delivering these to the Water Resources Department today. They will count as official public comments to the Water Resources Department. Uh, Food and Water Watch also copied the governor and the Water and the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife Commission on all these comments because we think it's important for them to know every single public voice that's coming out and asking for the, this water to be protected. Um, any questions for any of the other? Uh, the Cascade Blocks. Yes. Um, you spoke about some of the city council being pro this deal. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to their motivations at all? I understand you're kind of on the other side of it, but they're not here, so. Right. Um, I'm not really authorized to speak on behalf of anyone else in council. Um, I do know that a lot of their arguments include economic development and the jobs that they say it will bring to the city and the, the tax base that it will bring to the city from selling them the water. And, and this deal would include actually selling the water. They, they, they wouldn't be able to just set up and start pumping it out of the, out, out of the right, it's a spring or a river, I'm not sure. Well, there's actually, um, the plan includes uh, a two-line plant. And as I understand it, Right now, one of those lines is going to be spring water pumped directly from uh, Herman Creek. And the other line will be with a different brand name, and that's going to be just regular well water that they pump from our municipal supply. And so they would be paying the same fees as, as a one of their neighbors in Cascade Locks for the water? Um, actually, they would probably right now be paying less than a normal customer because of the volume discount that the city plans to give them. And do you have a percentage or anything? What's that discount going to be? I, I can't give you an exact number on that right now, but if you want me to follow up, I would. Okay, please. Okay. Give me your card afterwards and I'll get back to you. Any, anyone else have one for me? Yeah, any other questions? Are we Can I just get a shot of your... Um and we also have the H2 Origami um, sign, which I think since... If we want to do a photo op with that. 